Thank you, Edward. You could actually imagine that people who are in uh, problems want to save more. So let's, let's have a look, we'll take a look at that and, and what it means, uh, at least from where the NSSF sits. But the Richard Biarogaba will be joining us right now. It's his caution savers who are eligible to, to benefit under the midterm access law not to erode their savings due to being desperate while uh, presenting numbers today uh, to the media at, the, at a media breakfast in Kampala Serena Hotel. And he also reported that of the 50 billion shillings that is meant to be paid out weekly for some five months will also... Uh, uh, I mean, also noted that only 57% of the payments will be below 10 million shillings. And he warned savers may be left with nothing uh, for retirement. He also warned that the fund has not invested in long term, just like you saw in that story, securities since June last year. And that returns were 100 basis points off the target, which could affect your interest rate. Who knows? You're very welcome, Richard. He's here, by the way. Thank you very much for coming through to explain to us. This is... You, you've been making headlines the whole day. I don't know for good reasons or for bad reasons. Because I know where you've come from, warning savers not to erode savings, yes. not to be excited. Yes. And, and today I was imagining what you were thinking as you know, people came into, uh, a swarm of people came to NSSF to pick money. All right, so um, you recall that part of this morning was uh, with the media, uh, briefing them on um, uh, the process, how it starts. But obviously, uh, a lot of hard work has been over the last couple of uh, days, uh, in fact, months, uh, weeks, building the engine that we are using to be able to serve our customers. So um, when we were busy doing whatever we're doing this morning, my mind was on how success would be. Would the queues continue to build? Uh, will we be able to service them? Would our engines that we've been cre able to create in the back end be able to sort out the customers. And I'm glad to say that we have uh, passed this with flying colors. Mm. I can tell you that almost 3,000 people applied today were successful. Mm. Uh, almost uh, 400 of them uh, applied online. Uh, I know that the online app uh, did quite disturb a bit. Mm. But uh, I'm glad to say that um, all's well that ends well. First day was, uh, you know, if I was to rate ourselves, uh, would probably a high a high seven towards eight uh, out of ten and mm. uh, thanks to the guys uh, I've got a very good team that works for uh, for us and uh, I'm so happy that they were all able to pull together uh, we just for for you to to understand the sort of logistics we did everybody that has been working from home we brought them back into the offices mm. everybody who's been on leave we brought them back into the office except those who are are, are on maternity leave or those who are not well but everybody was in and everybody helped. You know, it was like all hands on deck. If you came into our head office, we had over 30, 40 people who were dealing with our customers. In the branches, we had over 10, 15 individuals dealing with our customers. Uh, in the back office, we had a huge team uh, dealing with the benefits. We added about 20 people on a team of about 31 in the back office to be able to, so about 50 people were dealing with, with the processing. So we are very confident that um, by the time we pay this first batch, uh, we'll be in a very good position. Repeat, repeat for us a little bit, how much will you have paid um, in, in the first phase at least? Okay, so our intention is to pay at least 50 billion every week. Mm -hmm. um, the first phase uh, we are using much of this week to be able to work out the logistics and uh, part of next week. Um, so we are making our first payment on the 17th, which is a Thursday uh, of March. Mm. Um, we will have collected from today, um, that's about 10, 10 days, mm. uh, all the applications during that period, including to uh, a Saturday and a Sunday, which we do not collect, and also the Women's Day. Okay. So seven days, uh, basically, of collections, uh, and we're hoping to pay that uh, on the 17th. Th that's and we're hoping that we will pay uh, maybe 100 billion because uh, that's uh, for a period of two weeks. Okay, great. And, and you raise it, if, if, because I know the story is really so big and you need the whole talk show. Yes. But you raise a, if, a, simple, you know, a, a couple of red flags here and there. You say the, the, the fund has not invested yes. um, uh, to prepare for this one trillion shillings. Yes. Can you sh shed some light a little bit into that and how that will affect, for instance, the interest rate, the fund's investment? It's, do you think it's a good thing at the end of the day? Well, well of course, um, people wanted their money. Um, COVID came and we needed to deal with that. Um, so what we've been doing that over the last uh, 
starting in June last year, when the whole discussion came around, mm -hmm. uh, we, estimated, we estimated that we needed about a trillion shillings uh, available in, in ready cash to be paid out at short notice. Um, normally, our investment portfolio has been that uh, we invest in long-term bonds, uh, long-term bonds of 20 years, 15 years, uh, mostly 20-year bonds actually, because most of our, our, you know, our members are in their 30s. They won't need their money until they are in their, their 55. So 20 years investment horizon is what we've been looking at. Uh, but certainly, once we knew that we needed a trillion shillings uh, in about January, February, now much, mm. uh, we started to invest in the short term, which meant that all the money that was coming in, uh, we invested it in treasury bills, mm. uh, or you know, treasury bills for three months, six months, uh, one year, mm. uh, and we also invested in deposits, fixed deposits in banks for three months. And that's uh, where the money six has been months. coming from. So that's yeah. where the money is coming from that okay, we're okay. actually going to pay. Okay, great. And but and if you look at the yield curve, mm. uh, the difference between uh, the interest rate that you pay on a long-term bond or you receive on a long-term bond and the, the interest that you receive on uh, a short-term mm. treasury bill uh, is in the region of about a hundred sorry 10 percentage points mm. so I think the last time I looked uh, the return on a bond uh, on a treasury bill was around six seven percent mm. Uh, the return on a bond uh, of that sort of maturity is around 15, 16 percent. Mm. So the difference is about 10 percentage points and therefore that 10 percentage point will obviously affect uh, that investment of about a trillion shillings uh, on our portfolio of uh, 16, 17 trillion shillings. What would that do to the interest in October? So when you announce if you interest? blend everything in there, um, the other parts of the market haven't been doing as well as, sure. uh, yeah. as well. If you look at the stock exchange, that hasn't performed as well as it did last year. Uh, of course, we've got also real estate um, because of COVID and the impact of that. We, our projects hasn't been as quickly mm. uh, accomplished as possible. Mm. So we obviously think that we will take a knock on our returns. Mm. Uh, what I shared with you uh, this morning on the press was that um, the return that we were expecting to have uh, achieved on the portfolio mm. as at the end of uh, February uh, was about 11.7%. Uh, the numbers show that that has reduced to about 10.3%. Because so already that. you can yeah. see that sure. the returns it's, it's are having an impact. Reducing. Yes. Um, uh, so, and so I don't know how the numbers are going to look like at the end of the year, but, uh, but suddenly be different. Uh, we, we know that it will be downward. Okay, okay. Richard, as you go, um, you raise a, a, a red flag also on, on people who are withdrawing money. So the majority uh, don't make uh, more than 10 million shillings, yeah. which is you know little amounts for yeah. someone to take. And then you warned also in, in during the press briefing that. Um, what is someone going to do with uh, 8 million shillings, 6 million shillings, um, yeah. and, and that people are erod eroding their savings? What would you advise them to well do with the money that they have already decided to take yeah, as you go? Because <laughs> they're, they're warning me, time is out. Mm. Yeah. All right. Of course, uh, I would like uh, people to take their money. Uh, it's their right to have their money. Yeah. But I would like people to take their money and um, empower themselves with financial literacy. We've been running financial literacy lessons, which basically teach people how to save, how to invest, and how to get good returns. So my, my appeal to, to the people there, have a good plan before you pick this money. If you don't have a good plan, please pick the money, put it in a, an account, make sure it is safe, and then over the next couple of weeks, uh, take some financial literacy lessons from us, um, and then hopefully you'll be able to find some way of, uh, of uh, uh, investing this money. However, if you have a plan, where you are hoping to get returns that are higher than what NSF was offering, please go ahead and invest. Mm. Uh, we do not have any problem with that, but be very careful. Thank you very much, Richard, for taking uh, time off your very busy schedule today. I know it was a hell for you. Yes. Thank you so much, and we'll definitely call you back another time to come and explain. Yes, thank you.